Today's video is going to be all about pretty feminine fragrances. So if that's your type of thing, then please keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you are visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Hayley and I review fragrances. So the theme of today's video is pretty and feminine fragrances. This is Valentine's Day inspired, hence why I am wearing a very bright pink shirt not my normal type of vibe, but we are going to roll with the theme. And today's video, as I mentioned already, is all about pretty feminine scents. So without further ado, let's jump into the first fragrance. The first fragrance is by Zerzhov, and this one is called Cambridge Club. And I'm so glad that I discovered this fragrance because this gives me such nostalgia. This is the type of scent profile that got me into collecting fragrance. I used to wear this type of scent profile all the time and to me, this is the ultimate pretty and feminine fragrance, really, really attractive. And I just will always love this type of DNA. However, the way it's been done by Zerzhov, oh, it is just perfection, 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 perfection. I will explain a little bit more what it might smell a little bit similar to. But this is, in essence to me, pink roses, powdered sugar, vanilla, and a sweet candied lemon. So, so attractive in my opinion. The ultimate pretty fragrance. And as I said, it just gives me that nostalgic feel. And I don't know what took me so long to discover this one because it's a scent profile that I love and adore. Now I used to wear Montel's Intense Cafe all of the time. I used to also wear Mancera's Roses Vigny. And this is in that same type of category, but in my opinion, more elevated. And I just really love this DNA so, so much. And this fragrance was the one that inspired the concept of this video. It's the first type of scent profile that comes to mind when I think about pretty and feminine scents. I will link somewhere where you can get a decant of this one below. If you love this type of DNA, I would highly recommend checking out Cambridge Club. It is so, so pretty, and it's also a scent profile that gets a lot of compliments too. Next up, we have another Zerzhov fragrance, and this time it's from the Casamaratti line. This is Dama Bianca. I think this scent is spectacular. It's really grown on me even more over the last couple of months. This is an angelic, fluffy, slightly gourmand fragrance in my opinion. It has this soft, sweet, powdery vanilla. There's a tart quince note in here. It's got powdery purple florals in here. And it just reminds me of what a fairy princess would smell like. I'm really into my fantasy books and I could pair this with quite a few different characters, but there's one specifically that comes to mind, but I don't want to spoil any books in this video. This just smells really, really angelic. It's ethereal, it's elegant, and I nearly picked this for my wedding day scent. I don't want to say I regret not picking it, but I wish I kind of included it somewhere within my wedding. So, so special. I would recommend getting a sample of this one if you're looking for the ultimate pretty, angelic, feminine, ethereal fragrance. Next up is Sue Malakis by Dries Van Norton. Another easy pick to include in this video. Very, very pretty and also very feminine. I would say this leans slightly sexy too. Not super sexy, but it has a slight edge to it and as the name would suggest, it does smell silky. There is a silk note in here and I can't explain why it smells like silk, but it's just the feeling, it is so smooth. Kind of cooling to my nose in some way. You've got this really tart kind of black currant blueberry vibe going on. A little bit of chestnut, a little bit of cacao. It is in essence a fruity floral but with a twist and I don't know, I just feel like this composition is super special. It's one I would 100% recommend sampling because it is expensive and it might not be for everyone. Some people have said that they struggle with the longevity on the projection on this one. I really do not. I think this one projects so beautifully and I get a good seven to eight hours out of it. 
I just think it's very pretty. It will always be a love for me. There is something so special in the DNA. And I think that comes from connecting with a fragrance. And we will all have a fragrance that we connect with. And some people won't find that fragrance special and others will absolutely love it. And for me, I have a very special bonded connection with Sway Malakis. And I don't know, I kind of saved this one for best. I know I shouldn't, but it's that kind of fragrance for me. I would say it's in my top three fragrances that I save for special occasions. So try get a sample of Sway Malakis, but totally fits the vibe of this list. Next up, we have Manakara by Indult. And this is another fragrance that's quite hard to get your hands on and nose on. I couldn't get a sample of this one. It's really hard to find in the UK. I don't think there's any stores in the UK that sell this one either. And it's been on my wish list for maybe a year and a half. And I finally stumbled across a bottle on eBay for quite a good price. I think I got 25 to 30% off and I snapped it right up. It was a blind purchase. And yes, this one was a love at first sniff very, very pretty, very, very feminine. And it is my favorite lychee fragrance that I have ever smelt. In essence, this is lychee and rose. And you're probably thinking, does it smell like Delina? No, it doesn't smell like Delina, not to me anyway. Delina has that tart rhubarb note in there and also quite a few other notes going on. Whereas to me, I mostly just get sugary, slightly tart lychee, and a powdery sugared rose. So it is sugary, it is sweet. And I would say the rose is kind of pink to magenta pink. And it is the best lychee fragrance I have personally ever smelt. It is expensive for the size of the bottle and the presentation, but I will repurchase this over and over now that I've got it in my collection. I love it so much. I only purchased this one in December and I have been wearing it quite a lot already. So if you can get your nose on this one and get a sample of it and you like lychee and rose, I would highly recommend trying this one out. Next up is Mallow by Soradora. Very, very pretty fragrance, very feminine, but also projects beautifully. This has the most intoxicating scent trail. Now it is a sweet, fluffy, powdery fragrance with lots of violet. But I get a kind of marshmallow vibe from it. I believe there is actually marshmallow in here. I can't remember the notes off the top of my head. But I get this kind of raspberry, strawberry, marshmallow vibe from it with lots of powdered sugar. And then you get the powderiness from the violet. And the best way to describe this is being almost like Love Don't Be Shy by Killian or Oriana by Puff and Damali, but add in lots of powdery violet. It's stronger than both of those fragrances lasts longer, has better sillage, but also is more unique. I don't find this one cloying at all. It is a very sweet fragrance, but you're getting a powdery cloud of marshmallow with the powdery sugar. I know I've just said powder a lot and then lots of violet. I do get a fruitiness. There is raspberry in here, but I also pick up a kind of strawberry feel to it. So it could be a combination of raspberry strawberry and violet marshmallows but if you like fragrances similar to oriana similar to princess similar to love don't be shy but you want something with a little bit more oomph and you also want something that has that kind of powdery violet in there you need to check out mallow because this fragrance was one of my favorite releases of 2023 Next up is a fragrance from Argos and how spectacular are the Argos bottles? And this one is Palace Athene. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's quite a new addition to my collection, but over the last couple of weeks, I have been wearing it a lot. And this is such a pretty fragrance that also has great longevity and has a slight unique touch to it too. The opening is quite tart. You've got I believe grapefruit in the opening and red berries. And then there is some bergamot and pink pepper, 
lots of florals through the mid pretty feminine florals like peony i think there's some rose it's got hyacinth there is some iris and also some violet giving it a powdery edge again i think purple florals are so feminine i really do and then you've got a real sweetness in the base too. So there's some vanilla, but then you've also got that amber that really grounds it. But overall, it's a tart, feminine, fruity floral. And if you've been watching my recent videos, you will know I love Birth of Venus by Argos. And I feel like their fragrances are blended so beautifully that you can't necessarily pick out the notes as such. This also has a green edge to it, which makes the florals smell really realistic. But I love how tart the opening is with that grapefruit and also with the red berries. I think this one is pretty unique, actually. I don't have anything that smells similar to this one in my collection. And this is definitely a pretty and feminine fragrance, but it's a little bit different from the others in this list in terms of it has this unique edge and quality to it. And it doesn't necessarily have a mass appealing DNA. There's just something a little bit different, which is the reason why I wanted to include it in this video, because I know there are a lot of you that want something a little bit unique, something to stand out from the crowd. So I would really recommend getting a sample of this one because it is so beautifully done. Next up is a fragrance from Ex Nihilo, and this one is Vespa Glitz. I could have included quite a few different Ex Nihilo fragrances within this list, and I've gone with one of the more underrated fragrances. Now this only launched last year, and I don't see too many people talking about this one. It is so underrated. This is such a classy, elegant fragrance that features yellow florals, yet at the same time, it's sweet, it's feminine, it's very, very pretty, but it does have those balmy, waxy yellow florals, such as Ylang Ylang, and it also has some mimosa. I believe there's jasmine in here too. I think this is so, so pretty and highly underrated from the house. It does have a mass appeal DNA for sure. Very, very likable. It's got that kind of classy, put together, elegant vibe. I wouldn't say this is necessarily a sexy fragrance, but it's very feminine, very, very pretty. You get a burst of mandarin and neroli in the opening, and the yellow florals start to come out a little bit more when it starts to dry down. And the base is what gets me. There's tonka bean, vanilla, and musk. And I, I do love this from the opening, the mid, and the dry down, but the dry down really, really gets me. Such an elevated floral in my opinion. But if you are looking for a classy floral that's timeless, you can wear it all year round. You could wear it all day, but also into the night. This is one that I would highly recommend getting your nose on. And if you are a fan of the YSL Lieb DNA, you will probably like Vespa Glitz. So those were all of the fragrances that I wanted to include in today's video. However, I have so many pretty feminine fragrances in my collection that I found this really difficult to narrow it down. And I know there's a lot missing, but I wanted to highlight some that are really standing out to me at the moment, some that I've not spoken about before or some that I feel are underrated too. But what I want to know is what fragrances do you feel are super pretty and super feminine? Please do let me know your favorites in the comments below. But thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.